like around that time too, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I was looking for kind of things to help with my memory problems and my some, some of my disabilities. I was trying to find things that I could do that would, would kind of help with my my own issues, you know, my, um, some of the problems that I, that I was experiencing, you know, dealing with my, my head injury and, and, uh, like I never understood how, like my kids, they were like all about watching YouTube and I never understood how they could watch somebody else play a video game. I was like, why wouldn't you just play a game yourself? Like, how is it entertaining to watch somebody else play a game? I just, I didn't understand it. Like it didn't, it didn't click for me. Um, I hear the big guy. I hear him. Oh, you did not do that to me, game. happens every 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 now and then this it's actually been very rare for this to happen to me but it, it has happened before and it sucks oh. vanguard 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 and you're Quirky, quirky, quirky errors. I was fully buffed. I was fully buffed. What are you doing, Vanguard? Why would you do that to me? Oh my goodness, Vanguard. No, I didn't lose the progress. I, I just, uh, it's just an error where I have to, uh, start the, the match back over. Somehow I lost connection to, uh, to their server. Battle.net is busy. Uh -huh. Looks like everybody got booted from 
from the Battle.net server. Like, Battle.net as in World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, um, Diablo, like all of their games. So let's see if it can, if it'll let me back on here. We'll, uh, we'll sit in queue here for a bit. I got music going at least, you know, hopefully, hopefully the music is good. I, I have no idea. I'm not listening to it. That's, uh, it would be a bit distracting, unfortunately, from, I have to hear game sounds, but I can, uh, there we go. Now I can hear the music. This is my, uh, my playlist here, uh, for, uh, I got tired of, like I used to use, um, NCS, which is called literally no copyright songs. And it's like a curated playlist on YouTube where they, uh, supposedly give you or let you use music people upload their music to it and allow you to add it to your videos copyright free so you can put it on there but then what was occurring is they would then sign with a label or later on after they've allowed thousands and thousands of people to add their music to videos, they would later on copyright it and then start collecting money from all of those videos that were published on YouTube. Once, you know, once they put a copyright in for their song, then they're allowed to then claim all of the ad revenue for any video that's published on YouTube that uses that music, um, which is really shady and it's really frustrating to deal with. And I was having like hundreds of my videos getting copyright struck like repeatedly because I had used all of that. Um, so I got tired of that happening. Um, Let's see. That's on my channel. I don't want to search my channel. I want to go. Um. See, no copyright sounds. I don't want it to actually play, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it flat out like says that you can use this music and people, you know, especially when you're new to, to YouTube, you don't really know any better so you're looking for music to add to your videos so you you know upload this and you 
you know, it, it might be fine for a year, you know, you might be good for like a whole year. And then afterwards, it's like, bam, all of a sudden you get copyright strike for, you know, this random song on this video you uploaded, you know, a year ago. And that's what they do. You know, they, they are relying on the... Uh, the idea that you might not challenge their copyright, you know, for an old video. So then these dudes are literally just collecting, you know, money from other people's work. And it's, it's just shady. So I just said, screw it. And I pay for this service which epidemic sounds it's literally it costs me every month but i mean they have like tons and tons like you can search by genre you can search by mood you know they have different themes and you know i just i just chose my own playlist which is just all pretty much just laid back um it's not all like completely laid back, but it's a mix of different kinds of genres, but it's all relatively laid back. And, you know, I mean, I threw together like six hours worth of tracks and, you know, for like 15, $20 a month, I can upload. And as long as my video was uploaded when I paid for this service, like I can stop the service tomorrow. And as long as I don't upload after that, the videos that I uploaded when I was paying for the service, they won't ever copyright strike. So I don't have to worry. Like I have not had a copyright strike since I've been paying for this service, which is so refreshing. But there's also some other, uh, YouTube, uh, like Dr. Disrespect. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard, heard of Dop Dr. Disrespect. He actually put out, uh, albums, which is weird. Um, uh, but he, he's put out music himself, uh, because it's such a problem, um, with copyright. It's, and, and finding music that you can use for your streams uh, that he's he's actually put together albums himself uh, that he releases free for people to use in their videos and streams um, and then there's also um, guys like uh, Uh, it was a senpai. Oops, wrong computer. Uh, This guy, Senpai, uh, Senpai Gaming, he has a couple of YouTube channels. Uh, he also, he, he was a big streamer over on Twitch that moved to YouTube. Uh, he was originally a singer uh, who then went into gaming um, and streaming, made it big on Twitch and then moved over to uh, YouTube. But he created uh, several albums worth of music that he also released uh, for free for people to use, um, which is also pretty cool. Um, and it, it, it's decent music too. Um, and, and it's all just because of it's such a problem with copyright strikes, but he also does like a lot of, uh, reviews on streaming gear and equipment and how to upload stuff. But like, you can see, like he talks about copyright strikes and stuff. But 
Um, what happened to my, uh, did it close? Where's my battle net launcher? Yeah, if, I mean, if, if you're going to make videos, it's, it's definitely, if you're going to be serious about it, I would, I would, I mean, honestly, if you're not monetized, even if you're not monetized, if you think you might someday be monetized, it's definitely worth the $15 a month for something like Epidemic Sounds. Just it's good quality music and it's then you don't have that headache. Come on, where is Battle.net Launcher? Come on. Now I won't even pull up my battle net launcher. What's up with that? They are currently experiencing a DDoS attack. Which may result in high latency and disconnections for some players. We're actively working on mitigating the issues. Okay. Well, you put me in a queue. Well, leave me in the queue then, homie. Don't. Don't make my queue disappear. I, ha I had it up and then it just went away. I think this is uh, the same thing that happened to, uh, oh, what's that new game that just came out? Um, oh shoot. There's a brand new game that just came out. Um, I know Tim the Tatman was playing it. 
but uh, they were dealing with DDoS attacks. Have you ever thought about going back to the beginning, like Halo 1? Um, I've never played Halo. Well, I can't say I've never played Halo. I I did play Halo a couple of times while I was like out at sea back in the day. Some guys had some Xboxes. Um, but uh, that was kind of it. That's really my only experience with, with Halo series. Um, like I was never into shooters. Like honestly, like War Robots is like the first shooter style game I ever actually seriously played. Um, I was always more of a MMO player. Like I played competitively. Um, um, EverQuest and EverQuest 2 like for about 10 12 years that was my go-to game um like i was in in a uh well several but uh several uh very highly competitive uh worldwide leading um guilds uh for especially for everquest 2 um and uh I was a top ranked, well, mainly with my brigand, but uh, it was kind of tough to 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 keep up with that because of my deployments and going out to sea and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I was never really into shooters so much. Um, but. No, I don't know. I, uh, I've thought about like going and maybe playing some of the, the older like Call of Duties or whatever that I haven't actually played. Um, like kind of like how I went back and was playing Modern Warfare. Like I bought Modern Warfare when it came out, but I never played it when it came out. Like I played it like a couple of times but that was when I, I tried playing mouse and keyboard and I just I couldn't I couldn't do it with my arms um, uh, so yeah playing playing mouse and keyboard I just I, I, I just didn't have the dexterity with my fingers and which, which kind of made me sad and which is also why I couldn't really get back into like MMOs again because I mean you really have to to be quick <laughs> with your fingers to, to play MMO um, and uh, but uh, I mean really it was when I I like war robots. The only reason I started playing that was because my son, he was like eight years old at the time, asked to download it. And I always, you know, looked at the games first to see what they were before I allowed him to download them to make sure they were appropriate. So I saw it and I looked to see what it was. Um, and I was like, well, that's kind of actually seems a little bit like it might be fun. So I let him download it and uh, I checked it out myself and I was like, well, that's kind of kind of fun. And at the time I had also downloaded um, and was experimenting with Fortnite and um, PUBG. Fortnite was an absolute hard no. Like I just, I can't, I can't do the super cartoony, like super, super cartoony games. Like that's just too much for me. 
Um, and then the um, it was the like PUBG was okay, but it was really too slow paced and like the movement and everything was just way too mechanical and clunky. So it didn't really stick for me. Um, but man, I had a lot of fun with War Robots and and uh, at around the same time was uh, I was also playing a lot of Madden. Um, like around that time too, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I was looking for kind of things to help with my memory problems and my, some, some of my disabilities. I was trying to find things that I could do that would, would kind of help with my my own issues, you know, my, um, some of the problems that I, that I was experiencing, you know, dealing with my, my head injury and, and, uh, like I never understood how, like my kids, they were like all about watching YouTube and I never understood how they could watch somebody else play a video game. I was like, why wouldn't you just play a game yourself? Like, how is it entertaining to watch somebody else play a game? I just, I didn't understand it. Like it didn't, it didn't click for me. Um, so I decided I would go ahead and maybe, maybe try to try to make one of these videos. It, you know, I was like, how hard could it be? You know, like, let me, let me record, you know, one of these videos, maybe learn how to do some editing, trying to do it all on my iPad. You know, I could just use my iPad for it because trying to do the computer stuff was a little bit too advanced for me at the time. Hey, what's up, Double Edge? Uh, do I still play War Robots? No, I don't. That's, uh... <laughs> uh, long story there but uh, but so I so I so I made my first couple of video my, my first video and I, and I was surprised it got selected I was like wow but I learned through making that video that it was because the steps in making a video I had to teach myself those steps each time I did it because it, it was like a, a memory training exercise. Every time I opened my editor to edit a video after I had recorded it or every time I did something. And still to this day, if I go to edit a video or do something, no matter how many times I've done it, I, I, I don't remember all the steps. I still have to kind of reteach myself how to do it. And, you know, so I started doing it kind of on the more regular. And that was kind of when uh, I, I got, I guess I got noticed um, uh, by, um, by, uh, sorry. See, this is a problem with my memory right now. <laughs> uh, not Manny. Um, the other big YouTuber over there. Adrian. Sorry. I got noticed by Adrian, uh, for some of, some of my videos that I had been posting up. Um, so he kind of took notice of some of my videos that were getting posted and some of the guys that I had, had been playing with, uh, Kine and, uh, uh, several other 
uh, of the guys that I played with, you know, they all kind of really were pushing me, make more videos, make more videos. You should do this. Maybe you should learn how to live stream. And so they kind of really pushed me into doing these baby steps to, to do more and more and more and more and more. Um, and eventually that led to, uh, you know, Pixonic asking me to become part of their, their program uh and and getting sponsored by them as a channel which was honestly it was a, a huge you know honor i mean no matter what you might think of of them as a company or what they their business practices are uh it, it was it was a big deal for somebody like me um who i honestly i i see as a nobody um who really did everything that's really was self-taught and like I everything I do with streaming and video editing and everything like I, I had to teach myself I had to research I had to learn I I, I get on YouTube I, I I get on Reddit I I I, I learn everything you know what program I might need what you know editor or you know where to find all the information or resources everything i have to learn and then how to do it and then how do i improve it or how do i do it again and and that's where it really helps with my like my my head injury with, with my memory problems my my ability to think and do steps you know starting it which people don't understand when you have a head injury being able to do things in order um is very difficult uh where you have to accomplish something um and put things in order it's it's very difficult like you can be like okay well i need to to you know do something and this is what the end product needs to be and most people are like oh that's simple you know you you got all these different things in different steps and you you just don't think about it you just do but when somebody has a head injury all those steps that you don't have to worry about all of the sudden don't come natural anymore like you 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 don't understand how to get there anymore and you you literally have to think about it like every every little part you have to actually put effort into um and and that's where for me it was all about the video and, and editing and 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 how do i set up to do a live stream and then also the streaming itself being able to talk to people uh being able to make sense um being able to uh relate to to people like I had, I had closed up, um, after my injury, I had closed, closed myself up, um, and I had shut out of all of my friends and all of my family. And basically I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. I didn't talk to anybody. There was no socialization and it was a very... And, and that lasted for eight, nine years. And with gaming, gaming allowed me to start communicating again. And it started, you know, simply first, you know, just talking to people on Discord, you know, in the game. Communicating and making friends with, you know, that way. And, and that's a huge step that really is for somebody, somebody that, that has been closed off, somebody that's been, you know, hurt or somebody that, you know, with PTSD or somebody, you know, it, that, that's a big deal. Um, and then to be able to expand that out and 
I, I, I took the step and like my first few streams, I didn't talk. It was just gameplay. And then, and then my voice to put my voice to a live stream. That was a big step. And then another big step was to reveal my face. Like my first several live streams, it was just an, an emoji. Like I used an emoji instead of my face. Cause you know, I was embarrassed of who I was, you know, I, I, I mean, especially cause I don't recognize like still to this day, when I look in the mirror, I don't see who I don't see me like this face is not the face that I was born with. When I got injured, my whole face got caved in, you know, they rebuilt my face. This is not, this is not me. You know, this is plastic surgery. They literally took my rib and rebuilt parts of my face using my ribs. And that's, they made me. Um, so I don't, I don't recognize myself. And it was, it was a big deal to be able to put myself out in front of people. Um, so that was kind of, that took a lot. Uh, and, 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 and it's still kind of a lot, you know, um, some days it's, I don't, I don't, I don't feel normal or right to just throw my, my, my face out here, you know? Um, but you know, I, I, I have to push myself to do it. Um, it's, it's just, uh, you anyway, know, I don't even know why I went on this big tangent. I guess I'm just trying to fill space because battle nets down, but, um, Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I did it too. Um, because I mean, I've had a lot of things go wrong in my life over the last couple of years. And like, this is all I've had honestly to fall back on. Um, and this has legitimately kind of really helped save me. It's, it's, this is what I have. This is what I have, you know, I'm, I, I, I live alone now, um, which is amazing. I, nobody ever thought I would be able to do that again, but I am. And, but the flip side of that is I'm living alone now. And this is, this is literally what I have each day to look forward to. That's why you've seen me streaming almost every day now. Um, and I'm glad that I have it. And that's where, you know, I do it, you know, I do it for me. I do it to, you know, because it is therapy. You know, I, I, I do believe, you know, when, you know, it's not just what's thrown up, you know, on the screen when I say, you know, gaming is therapy, I believe it, it really is therapeutic, you know, for a lot of people. And, and it's, it's often overlooked, but for me, it, it really is. And it's not just the gaming, this therapy, it's, it's the streaming, it's the, it's the platform but also it's important to me to, to give this, you know, in case there's somebody else out there that might feel the need to come in and, and, you know, vent or come into the chat and be like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling all that good today. Maybe, maybe I need to come and just hang out. So it's, uh, so I, I do my, I do my best to provide it as a platform for other people. 
Um, well, I'm glad that you're here, guy. I know you work a lot, but I'm glad that you got a couple days off. Yeah, war, war robots did go down downhill pretty fast. I don't think it was so much the pilots that did it. Um, pilots didn't help, but uh, there. Uh, I think it was they. Uh, they their release cycle. They they started releasing too much too much content too fast and it wasn't it wasn't content like new maps it wasn't content for the player base it was it was content for them to make money and that's all it was and then when their new content to make money had a conflict with existing content that could compete with it they would just nerf that content and then force people onto the new content. And that's where, after a while, that's when I had to step away. And that's why I had to, eventually I had to make that choice. And it was hard, it was a hard choice because that was all I knew as far as making videos. And, and that was the community that I had built. And, I, and that was scary for me to walk away because that was what I relied on. It was like walking away from, you know, my help, you know, but I, you know, I, you know, I, I knew that I was going to, I was walking away from my streams where I averaged, you know, 40, 50, 60 people watching. I was walking away from that and potentially having nobody watch and that was really difficult and it wasn't about how many people were watching and it wasn't about money you know it, it was it was a it was about the community i was afraid to lose the community and i'm thankful that some of the community decided to stay I lost most of it, you know, that's, that, that was expected. Um, but I'm glad that some, some decided to stay. And, and I think, I think I'm slowly, very, very slowly picking up some. It's been hard because Vanguard was not popular with the Call of Duty crowd. Like just, they just didn't particularly care for Vanguard as a whole. Um, so it was hard to attract anybody that really wanted to watch Vanguard to begin with. Um, but it's what I had, you know? Um, so, and you know, I'm not a, I'm not a superstar player anyway. So <laughs> a self-help group of war robots pay to win. Yeah, I don't know if that's that, uh, that, that could that could turn south on you real quick <laughs> I, th I think I think that that already exists over on Facebook and it's pretty darn toxic man three minutes left am I actually gonna get back in? Yeah, I honestly, you know, I've, when I signed off of War Robots, the last stream that I did, I have not opened the app since. I haven't.
I mean, I had, I mean, on my main account, I, I invested a lot of money in, in that account too. You know, I mean, I, the money that I made off of, you know, my channel, it either went directly back to upgrading my gear and everything for YouTube or to, you know, content for, you know, buying packs or buying, you know, buying, you know, stuff for, you know, content. I mean, everything was invested back. I haven't, I mean, still, I, 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 I have not profited at all from anything that has gone from YouTube. I mean, I'm, I'm in debt from YouTube, <laughs> like by far. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I invested a lot in that account and I, I just could, I couldn't keep up. Look at that. It's going to let me in. But I mean, I'm looking at like some of Ben streams and, and I'm like, man, like some of the robots. Yeah, I still have, but the weapons I, like I've never even seen before the, the pilots, no, nah, not a chance. Like I wouldn't. And now they're coming up with like a new currency. Like, come on, dude. Like, uh, they're pushing it too far way too far this new currency that they're coming out with where you need uh you need this currency if you want to uh, upgrade to mk3 man that's gonna that's gonna put a lot of a lot of a lot more of the free-to-play players out that's a shame that is a shame, like a big shame. All right, I need about uh, 1600 Pack-A-Punch kills still. And that's it. Pretty much 1600 Pack-A-Punch. I can do it. I can do it. It's early enough. I've been I've been cutting off early each night. I can I can push. How you doing, Life Land? Welcome to the channel. <laughs> you are a pay to win player, man. That's uh that's crazy. Everybody's pay to win player, man. You either paying with time or you're paying with money. No, I don't want Archon. I want Shino Numa. Oh, I got, oh. I got it. Turn the music off of my headset though. Yeah. The music is for you guys, not for me. All right, let's, uh, this is professor Croft. You are there to find a powerful relic once used to trap Seraxis in her artifact. Open all barriers and explore the dig site. Understood. Yeah, it worked again. 